Hello, my name is Ben. And I'm Nora. And we are your hosts of the Too Vague Podcast this week. How's Chicago, Nora? I keep on asking you how Chicago is. I should say, how's Indiana? I hardly ever go to Indiana okay. anymore. But um, I don't know it that. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I go, I go and visit people right? Uh, and go to meetings and stuff, but you know, I'm a Chicagoan now. Well, that's good. I'm a definite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's good. There's a lot to do there. A lot of fun. Yeah. This week we are going to talk about a word that is one vowel drop away from being a carton. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what that word is? I think it might be cartoon. Cartoon. Do you watch a lot of cartoons as a, as a child or no? Was that a little bit before? Um, or did you listen to cartoons? We watched, <laughs> yeah, we did. We watched cartoons when we went to the show. Oh, okay. With the cinema. Right. Like we'd go when we were little kids, it cost 25 cents for a double feature. Good deal. There were usually two cartoons before it. Right. I mean, that's where we saw cartoons. Okay. And also at intermission, right? No. No? You there didn't was see- no intermission. No. Oh, not the not the they dancing just, thing that says "Let's all go to the lobby." No, that's the drive-in. That's the drive-in. Let's all go, drive the Let's all go that's to the, the drive-in. Okay. Oh wait, the lobby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And get ourselves a treat. Yes. But there was a double feature. That yeah, was maybe awesome. it did. Yeah, it maybe did, and I just don't remember it. Yeah. And there were like dancing cup of soda. Yes. Yes. Dancing yes. popcorn and a popcorn, candy thing, yeah. and and now I just don't think there's double features. It wasn't always. A double feature, but sometimes it was. But okay. sometimes it would just be one. Like if we went to see 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Right. Uh, right. I think we just saw that one, mm-hmm. you know. But it was always preceded by a couple of cartoons. Okay. They were like Looney Tune cartoons. Right, or right. The only cartoons that I was familiar with other than that, my dad, your grandfather, had a 8 millimeter projector. Oh, Yeah. And he got various 8 millimeter cartoons. Mm -hmm. My cousin worked at Bell & Howell at the time. Okay. So she got cartoons, Abbott and Costello, you know, little things like that. But we did do, we did see a lot of cartoons when he showed them. Yeah. And that, you know, that was okay. Was was one of them Heckle and Jekyll? Might have been. I don't, I don't remember. Okay. I really, you know, I'm trying to think what it was, but it was mostly like Looney Tune types, um, Disney after that, but that was later. Mm-hmm. Uh, or yeah, we'd see it at the show. We'd see Cinderella, Snow White. Those are old. Right. And so we'd see those at the show mm-hmm. and they were kind of animated. Right. Uh, featured. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, yeah. There is some debate as to what a cartoon is and what it isn't, but ah, I don't know okay. if you did any, if you found any of that, that information in your research or not, but. No, I didn't no. do research. Yay. Yay. I do have an article. Yay. That I How dare at. you? <laughs> yeah, right. Why did you do research? The one about uh, manga, I'll let you do. Oh, what, what too, are you? Too much Japanese. With manga, the debate is whether or not manga is a cartoon or it's a style of cartoon. Oh, yeah. Because it is. You refer to manga and is not it's comic book stuff. It's comics generally. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're it's right. not anime. Anime no. is the animated Moving. portion of it. Manga is the written stuff. It's equivalent to a comic thing, book right. or a graphic novel. Yes. You were reading about that as far as popularity of that getting No. No. No, I, I ran an article off. Okay. I printed it, printed it. Again with the running off. I know, I know. It's the old teacher thing. Um, Did you use? Hey, yeah, I, <laughs> made ditto. Ditto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I ran one off on cartoons and one on manga. Okay. And uh, I read the cartoon one, and I started to read the uh, manga one, and I got bored. Okay. But the the cartoon one was interesting. Looney Tunes. Do you remember Looney Tunes at all? I do. But da but but da. That's all, folks. I've been watching. Cuphead and Mugman. Okay. The little 15-minute animated things. Right. And they are doing it just like, I think it's Looney Tunes, uh-huh. like one of the old old one, old cartoons. Okay. Uh, there's so much that is like it. And even when they get into the cartoon, it's like 
they used to be dancing flowers. Mm-hmm. They're not dancing, but popping up and down. Right. They're doing it after, I think it's Mel Blanc, I think was Looney Tunes. Mm-hmm. We'll get into this when we uh, get into our video game section, but the brothers actually were influenced by a lot of that early 30s, 40s animation. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that, that a lot of their it's inspiration definitely. behind this comes from those. Okay. Yeah. You'll have to watch it. It's really, it's really cute. Yeah. And I showed you the game and is it the same as the game style wise or is it a little bit more polished? It's a little bit more cartoonish. I don't know how to explain it. Okay. Um, like I can't re- was that Cuphead that you showed me? I forgot. Yeah. yeah I showed you the, Cuphead the one. this morning. Yeah. That in the thing, their eyes would bulge, uh-huh. milk would go, they have milk in their cups. I don't know if you know that. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> milk would go d- down below and their eyeballs would get clear. Yeah. Uh, you know, things like cartoon things, you know. All these tune tropes, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like when you take a bicycle pump and you put it in someone's ear or mouth or whatever, and then you pump up the bicycle pump and then you turn it into a balloon and then you stick it with a pin. Yes, and right, they, right, yeah, right. Like all that kind of stuff. Right. Is it, is or you it... let go of it and it flies around, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> raspberry, 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 raspberry. Yep, yep, yep. So anyway, you need to watch it. It's fun. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it it's out. It's cute. Yeah. We talked about Way of the House Husband on a previous show. Yes. What did you think of that in comparison as far as lengthwise? Each one of these episodes of Cuphead, you said, is about 15 minutes? Yeah, give or take. Okay, and there are how many, 10 of them? or? I don't know. Uh, there's more than 10 mm-hmm. in one season, but there's two seasons out. Oh, okay. I think there's two seasons. Yeah. But, you know, I got down to the bottom where it says 10, and then there was that little arrow set, you know, like you press it and more come up, but I didn't go to see how many. Gotcha. There's plenty of them. Yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah. Way of the House Husband, it is based off a a manga. It does have very short, like a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. And then they switch to another. Like very little shorts, right. I like it. It's funny. It is funny. Did you, I mean, how much of it have you watched? Oh, I watched the whole thing. I binged it. Okay. I was uh, amused at uh, Jin, is it? The little kitty? Yeah, the kid, the the poop thing. (laughs) That thing, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> yep. And it was short. It was yeah. a, it was a you know, but... it was very much a cat right there. Yeah. Yeah, the whole thing is just really novel in its approach to, you know, it's a novel concept. Yeah. But you get what I said about like it being a one trick pony. There're just so many situations you can put him in that he's acting like he's still right, yeah. right, right that you're going to be. It's funny. It doesn't take too long to to watch him, but you watched cartoons before movies. Were there any trailers back then? Or did they just replace cartoons at the beginning of the movie with trailers? The trailers came, if I remember correctly, they came at the end of the movie. Oh, okay. And it's basically, it's coming next week. And they it was a very short compared to what they have now. Yeah. Maybe they showed them before. But it seems to me it was near the end. Probably less credits back in those days. Definitely. You, know, you definitely. got at least five minutes of credits. You got to wait. Right. For, right. It, especially if you want to see the secret hidden scene at the end of the movie. Ooh. Which is, yes. Yeah. Right. The amusing little bits throughout the credits, too. Yeah. Some of them have credits that are unique little bits. Right. Sometimes if they have little bits like that, they'll separate them. They'll just do like a main credits thing with the little oh, funny yeah. little and bits. Then, and then they go into like who the gaffers and the best boys and the, right. you know, all those people are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was wondering just because trailers are such an antiquated concept these days in a time where yeah. we have our phones. So Right. Um, right. it's connected to everything. Yeah. What's, what's the point in putting them there? I'm just, I, you know, usually I'm annoyed more than anything else. It's like, okay, well, if I wanted to see this trailer, I'd see it on, you know, it's like, yeah, it's yeah. not anything. I know. Generally it's not anything new. It's not anything uh, like that. I was going to say, and they go on forever. Yeah. I mean, you're waiting for your movie. Right. You had to go through the Coca-Cola announcements or whatever. Now these come and there's like five of them. Or, right. You know. Or one option is put them 
ahead of the movie and the movie starts exactly at the time it says. Like that's one of those things, but they don't do that. People are coming in, getting their seats, picking out their seats. Right. <laughs> I guess they want everybody to see them. Yeah. They want everyone to so. see them and then they also want them to see them like a movie instead of like Right. My theaters they have little little slide projector things where they can project things on mm-hmm. top of a of the screen beforehand and it has trivia and whatnot. Oh yeah. 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 I've and, seen that. And you too. could you could do that, you know, you can do that in in part of the you, you wouldn't have to have it in full screen mode, you know, just because it's like I don't know. It, yeah. To me it's really yeah. annoying to sit through and you know, you yes. can't really accurately determine how many how many minutes you can be yeah. late because right sometimes you got three sometimes you got five i mean it's yeah. just like yeah it's crazy if you want to incentivize people watching the trailers you can say right. watch this trailer and then at the end you'll get a secret code or whatever and then if you use this code you get 25 cents off and you can have an algorithm like generate a unique code for each viewing or whatever. I don't know about that. I'm just saying, you know, if it's like you can incentivize watching trailers in a different way, why do it, you know, right, in, in right, the theater? Right. I mean, you know. But there's, mm. there's different audiences, you know, for different movies. Yeah. And they need, uh, they need to know the audience just like uh, sampling needs – to know the population. Right. So you don't want to show an R rated trailer to a G rated <laughs> audience. Right, right. Did they have ratings back in your day? They uh, came about uh, maybe when I was like high school, college. Oh, okay. So, so it they was. They did not have them at first. Was there a big outcry from parents? Is that the reason why? Or did they just happen? I'm not sure. The, the one thing that they did have. Uh, which a whole bunch of us didn't pay any attention to, was the Catholic something or other rated films. And okay. so Catholic kids always had a rating. Okay. Watch it, don't watch it. I think that was it. <laughs> oh. And it was so that we had a little bit more information than that. But yeah, I don't know how it came about. Introduced in 1968. Okay, college. Following Hayes Code of Classic Hollywood Cinema Era, the MPA rating system, one of various motion picture rating systems that it were used to help parents decide which films were appropriate. I, I'm sure I could do a deep search, <laughs> some research. Yeah, but don't. Not right now. Not now. Oh, okay. Now. <laughs> we're talking about cartoons now. Yes, we're talking about cartoons. So that's what you think about with cartoons is just the movies mostly, or movies in today, well, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. The debate, I mentioned the debate briefly on what a cartoon is and what it isn't, right? Yeah. And it's a silly debate. It's just, right. okay, so if the features of the characters are exaggerated in any way and it's something where right. it's not, right. or they're superheroes or whatever, then they're cartoons. But if they're more realistic looking, they're animated, they're an animated feature. Which to me well, is like, well. Wait, now are you talking about moving uh, pictures? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because because there's also see, yeah, I mean, there's uh, stills. Let's call them. Right. You know, it isn't all it isn't all um, animation right. or cartooning or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and and when you first asked me, you asked if I watched them on TV, and so of course I went to the animation right in my mind mm-hmm. uh, but we also did um i mean cartoons when we'd get the sunday well we'd get papers but the sunday papers you know came and i i was under 10 years old and it would be everybody would want the not the sports section the comics yes except my dad he didn't my dad didn't want the comics but uh do you ever refer to them as the funny papers yes yeah. the funny papers that's what i believe mom called them that sometimes oh. i'd read them and i wonder why they weren't very funny I, you know yeah they weren't very funny 
I gotta say, Dad didn't like. I mean, it isn't that he didn't like it. He just wanted to read the news and stuff like that. Right. But he did like some comics. Okay. He liked Walt Kelly, who does Pogo Possum. Okay. We're talking the 50s, right, you know, right. uh, and some in the 60s. And he was topical on political, so- sociological issues. Oh, okay. Okay. And so he was, he was funny about that. And he also liked Mad Magazine. Grandpa did? Grandpa, yeah, right. My mom did not like comic books that much. And so we didn't read comic books very much because she just didn't seem we were at the library getting books all the time right but um but we got it we could read mad magazine because dad thought it was good <laughs> i'm surprised they, they didn't make any mad magazine movies i think they did oh okay not magazine though they made mad tv oh maybe that's what i'm thinking of mad tv which was based on the property uh-huh oh wow Ran on Fox from 1995 to 2009, so it did last a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. A cartoon and what it is and what it isn't. I mean, it's all, if it's an animated thing, I mean, I just think of it as a cartoon. Do you think of the Terry Gilliam intros of Monty Python's Flying Circus? Those are little animated segments that are used cutouts basically to to animate these things right right very interesting look but it's still i mean to me it looks like a cartoon uh to me it's graphics okay all right that you know uh, what you're talking about right where the they move the cutouts this way and then yeah. that way yeah and yeah um that to me that isn't an animation uh, i guess technically it is because it's moving but um, well, some of the things move, like the eyes and stuff, but it's it's very basic. Oh, yeah, it's very yeah. rudimentary, sort of. The cutouts are used to, you, like, you draw your drawing on the cutout, and then you, if you want to move the eyes, you just move the thing in back right, of it and right, stuff. Right. Are there any other notable cartoons that you remember from your youth? No, the Disney movies and the cartoons we saw at the show and in our little home theater. <laughs> right, right. Eight millimeter. Eight millimeter. Yeah. yeah. We even had a, a screen. None of this sheet stuff or wall. We had a real screen. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Remember, kids, we're talking about the early 1950s. Yeah. The equivalent is going to be the green screen. Yeah. Because it's pretty much the same thing. You've got the, the thing, you put it behind you so you can project whatever you want to. But it's like, right. it's exactly like a green screen thing. Except it's white. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing. It's not green or blue or whatever. Yeah. And you'd sit in front of it or right. stand in front right. of it. There were political cartoons in the paper, too. And uh, like mom or dad would talk about them, you know, just mention them sometimes. I yeah. didn't go, ooh, ooh, let me read it. Right. Because I wouldn't have an idea, you know. Something that's political, they don't call it political comics. They call it a political cartoon, right? Yes, they do. But it is supposed to be funny. Even, I mean, the political ones are, fu- are supposed to be funny. They're supposed to be a sarcastic take or making fun of some political bit that's going on. Lampooning? Lampooning, I guess, yeah. Why don't you like my words? <laughs> well, no, actually, it's, it's a good word. It's okay. a good word. Okay. I was quite proud of myself coming up with lampooning. No, I'll have was, you know. It's a good word. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course, you know, they started in 18-something, 1840s, 1850. Which ones? Political cartoons. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thomas Nast was a famous old cartoonist mm-hmm. uh, that did political cartoons back then. I mean, you can look stuff up that he did. Right. I mean, it, it's, he's got a big repertoire, I guess. Do they ever have at the Art Institute yes. cartoons or comics, exhibits on that kind of thing? Because that is a piece of, of history, I think, that's kind of important, especially political ones, right? I would think, yeah, they do. They don't have it all the time. But yeah, I and I can't say positively, but someone there would think that's art that needs to be shown. Right. There's also propaganda posters, too. I remember seeing there was a oh, yeah. an exhibit of Russian propaganda posters. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was kind of a, a very interesting. And Russia was probably showing U.S. propaganda right. <laughs> posters at the time. Yeah. So, but yeah, they do, yeah, they do posters like that. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I'll have to check and see if they ever did any cartoons. Before we get any further, let's get into the, the definition, the official definition 
according to Oxford languages. Only the best. Only the best. Real tomato ketchup, Eddie? <laughs> Speaking of lampoons, did you ever see uh, National Lampoon's Vacation? Yes, I'm sure I did, okay. but I don't remember anything. There was a scene in there where it's like, I don't know why they call this stuff Hamburger Helper, Clark. It does just fine by itself. More helper? <laughs> <laughs> and then Chevy Chase's character says, real tomato ketchup, Eddie? Only the best. <laughs> anyway, back to Oxford. Yes, Oxford Languages noun it's a simple drawing showing the features of its subjects in humorously exaggerated ways especially mm -hmm. satirical in newspapers uh -huh. or magazines they also say a comic strip which is a cartoon strip that can be called a cartoon a simplified or exaggerated version or interpretation of something so i guess like that thing is a cartoon of whatever then you have motion picture using animation techniques to photograph a sequence of drawings rather than real people or objects. Full-size drawing made by an artist, preliminary design for painting or other works of art. That just, just seems like sketches. I was reading where it was used in Italy by the masters. They'd make what they called a cartoon. Yes, you're and right. And they gave it to part of their acolytes <laughs> now that you mention it in this definition they say tapestries are based on a set of cartoons commissioned by pope leo the 11th yeah da vinci used cartoons and they said some people you can even they they'd make pin pricks in them uh -huh. to kind of mark where they were going to i mean they'd put the cartoon up to whatever they were drawing on right and they put pin pricks in them to kind of give you something to trace, I guess, yeah. on the canvas or board or whatever they were working yeah. on. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that would be pinpricks in the canvas itself? I think so. I'm okay. not positive about that. Okay. I would have to ask somebody at the Art Institute, said, I guess. You said Da Vinci? He was one of them. You weren't close friends with Da Vinci? Yeah, yeah. Leo, Leo. Me and Leo go way back. Leo. <laughs> Yo, Leo, give me a painting. Oh, Raphael. Yeah. Oh, he was another one, and, and Leo. Oh, right, yeah. right. We're not talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, because they were no, all named no. after... No, I know. <laughs> Leo was no, one of them, not. and Raphael yes. was one of them. Uh, yeah, but but yeah. anyway, and also one more thing uh, on the word front with this is a, a verb, oh. verb cartoon making a drawing of someone in simplified or exaggerated way. So she has the face with enough character to be cartooned. I don't know. That's just kind of making a noun into a, a verb, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think yeah. I agree. Well, I guess it's like a caricature. Yes. Yeah, you know, perhaps. Yeah, that's are... that. I would call it a caricature. Even though you could say I'm characterizing this person, it's much easier to say i'm drawing a caricature of you i would agree with that yeah oxford get your story straight <laughs> now this is an interesting origin of cartoon late 16th century from italian mm -hmm. cartone from latin of carta and then english it's card so between card oh. and carton con cantone oh. is cartoon which is when it with the late the late century but right. it came from latin and italian combined with english so since i love the engram viewer so much yes <laughs> if you look at the engram of cartoon it's just pretty much one noun one definition right yeah starts out very low in the 1800s in print and then yeah. it grows by probably about 10 times its original which makes sense too, as as things in animation technology. got more and more complex. Yeah, technology. Yeah. And before I tell you some mm -hmm. origin of cartoon stuff, do you have anything to add as far as definitions? Not really. Okay. I'm looking at the papers I didn't study. You know, while you're looking at those papers, you were talking about comics not being funny, the funny papers. Oh yeah. The first thing that came to mind was Family Circus. Yes. <laughs> It's never funny. That's one of them. It's not yeah. funny at all. What's the point? 
But then there's also my buddy, Chris, who you know. Uh-huh. He, oh, <laughs> whenever we saw a, a Peanuts cartoon, and only the, the Sunday paper ones, the ones that were very large, not the three panel right, ones. Right, right, colored ones. Exactly. He thought that they were never funny, but you could arrange them into something that was funny. So that's what you oh. would do. Is you cut <laughs> cut out the each individual panel and then arrange them in a way that was funny. But but by itself, yeah, it was yeah, never yeah. funny. Well, that must have been a lot of fun. Oh yeah. So it was fun. E. Yeah. It's, yeah. Ooh, look at that. Look at you. Yeah. yeah. Getting oh, all checkness oh, oh. with the wordy wordy wordies. The uh, dad puns or whatever. Yeah. So let me get into really quick. We got the first cartoons. The first animated cartoons. Okay. One from the silent film generation called The Enchanted Drawing, which was yeah. by J. Stuart uh, Blackton. It's known for containing the first animated sequence on standard picture film. He has been considered the father of American animation because of that. Ah, okay. What the film is, is just a man drawing a cartoon face on an easel so he's doing things on an easel and then he yeah draws a bottle of wine and he's able to pick up the wine through the through the easel uh, and the glass through okay. the easel and give the cartoon face a drink and then there's like cigars oh. and <laughs> really yeah it has a real human in it it's a cartoon sequence done right. in a way that's pretty unique like the canvas is a cartoon Right, the easel that he's drawing on, right? Yeah, so, okay, okay, yeah. Which which yeah. makes sense. You're cool. not doing it on the film itself. You're doing it on the actual easel and they're just taken frame by frame, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what they mean by standard picture film. The second one was called Humorous Phases of Funny Faces. Say that 10 times really fast. No, Okay. no thank you. 1906, a short, silent, animated cartoon directed by James Stewart Blackton. Oh, wait a second. Okay, so this is the same dude. He's the father of American animation, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so I didn't remember his name uh, because Jay Stewart. But when I said his full name here, he also did one in, in 1906, one of the first animated uh-huh. sequences. Um, first animated film recorded on standard picture film, again, which is stop motion Cutout animations were oh, used. Yeah. It's on a chalkboard. Things were made to appear and move by altering drawings themselves from frame to frame. Film moves at 20 frames per second. So there was some stop motion technique wow. used in this too. It's still not making it on film necessarily, right? Right. You're using other other methods to mm-hmm. produce it on film. Yep, exactly. I mean, to get it to the film. Right, yeah. right. The first animated film, it's called Phantasmagory. Yes. Is, are yes. you familiar with that? Only because I happened to glance at it when I was not researching. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh darn you, not researching. It was like a, it's like a line drawing. Correct. They've got these things on YouTube where you can actually see the little things now. But yeah, it's and they're very short. I mean, all of them are pretty short. Right, understandable. Emil Cole, yeah, earliest example of traditional hand-drawn animation. It's considered by film. Yeah, I don't care what film historians think, really. Yeah, they consider it to be the first animated cartoon, Phantasmagory. What's the date on that? Nineteen oh eight. Oh, because it was done on film. Correct. You, you mentioned the stick man who would transforms into various things, transforms into a flower and an elephant. Yeah. And it's just basically very creative and unique. We used to do that on the computer. What did we call that? We? I mean, it was back 30 years or something. But you could, uh, like, draw a picture and make it move. They had a program that helped, but you drew other pictures and it morphed into it. Oh, Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're what you're talking about. So you can take two pictures and it would yeah. basically transform one thing into the other by morphing it. Yeah. That's interesting technology. And I think people do that, to, you know, people there are filters like that on TikTok and stuff that allow you yeah, to Yeah, I'm sure there are. Yeah. Wow. Just how amazing coming from that. <laughs> what you're talking about that technology was like back in the like 
90s, right? Like the 90s. late, late I would 90s. say 90s. Yeah. Yes, yes. Hottest thing since yeah. the the flying toaster is always. <laughs> oh, I love <laughs> remember those. Remember the flying, flying toaster? Yeah. I'm trying to remember what those were. My screensaver was flying toasters. Oh, okay. But there were other things. That was a standard choice because flying toasters, I think they're yeah. funny. And they were, and they did funny things. Yeah. I can't remember what, but like they pop toast to the next toaster over or something like, you know. I Pass mean just, the toast. Yeah, right, right. There was a movie that was like a remake of Star Wars called Hardware Wars. And this is just all from memory. <laughs> I don't know the exact specifics, but it was called Hardware Wars. And it had like, you know, like an egg beater going through the space. But there was a toaster <laughs> shooting. You mentioned the first cartoons that you remember seeing. Yeah, I think I did see some cartoons when I was younger, when I went to like day camp or whatever, they would play cartoons, right. but mom never let us watch right, right, any right. television that wasn't right. The, she did have a caveat. She did have a caveat. Okay. That was happy days. <laughs> it's, oh, <laughs> it's, it doesn't make sense looking back on it, honestly. But yeah, we could watch happy days and Laverne and Shirley. Although that was a little more adult, so she didn't want to see yes, that. But, yeah. but yes, that was the one. And then also, you know, like Heidi and right, right, right. Sound of Music. Any of those we could watch. Right, right. But we right. just couldn't watch anything else. So whenever we yeah. would go over to someone's house, man, we'd be binging on the yeah. TV, going, <laughs> right, right. "What is this Lost in Space thing that I've never heard of?" Yeah. But anyway, one of the things that we did see when we were younger is a Disney film called Fantasia. Oh, yeah. Did you remember seeing Fantasia? Many times. Well, uh, sometimes, yeah. I saw it at the theater, Mm -hmm. and I'm sure I've seen it. Well, I saw it on television when the Walt Disney Hour was on. Sometimes it was an hour and a half. Okay. It would be shown then, Mm -hmm. you know, every once in a while. And I'm sure I've seen it since. Yeah. It was wonderful. Oh, yeah. After we saw it, I remember the, and I don't know, I think she purchased the record after she saw it. I'm not sure if we had it beforehand. For some Uh, reason, I remember that we may have had it before we actually saw it. Um, mm -hmm, And I think mm -hmm. it was just me. Yeah, I think Adam would have been too young because it was around the. It was at the same time uh, that Star Wars came out that it was re-released. Oh, okay. The first time Fantasia was released, it was. Let me see. I think it was 1940 is the original, and it was like the touring thing because, oh, how the mighty have fallen. The movie was two hours and five minutes, and they didn't think people would be able to sit for two hour movies. Oh. <laughs> yep. I am one of those people, by the way. I am definitely one of those people. I I will not go see a two-hour movie unless it's something I really, really want to see. I have seen some that are pretty long, but it has to be good. I've also been known to leave the theater during a movie. Okay. When it came out, there were road shows with Fanta Sound. They would go from town to town. I'm guessing you probably didn't see that. You probably saw, my guess is you saw it, saw the 1963 one, 55? No, probably closer to that. It was when I was a kid. Oh, okay. And when I was in high school, I wasn't a kid. Gotcha. And- <laughs> so 1955, that's about right. Yeah. yeah. Possibly even earlier release. The release before that was 46. Well, that's possible that we saw it like in the uh, very early 50s. Yeah. Uh, when I would have been five or six, okay, uh, at, at the movie at the movie theater, and that's before fifty five. Gotcha. So it was also re released in nineteen sixty nine, and that is when they finally made back their budget. So <laughs> the budget that they spent <laughs> on the whole movie, but I don't think that was wow. the point. That that, that was no. the point for Disney. I don't think that was it. It was just kind of a spectacle and having the the soundtrack was amazing, and all the different shorts were really awesome. Yeah. Did you have a favorite short? Do you remember? Well, I just I always remember The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh, okay. I mean, there's other things, too, but that's what I always remember. And Bunches of Brooms. Oh, yeah, there were other things. There were, what was it, Hippopotamus Ballerinas? Is oh, that what they yeah. Were? 
What was that? Dance of the Hours? That could be. I don't know. Animals performing ballet sequences. So yeah, that was it. Dance of Hours was that one. Okay. The one I really liked, surprise, surprise, was the dinosaurs one. Even though it was a little scary, Rate of Spring uh, was pretty impressive looking. I'd have to refresh my uh, memory on it. Yeah. There was an interesting thing about that 1969 release that I didn't say. Yeah. So it is notable because... They removed a sequence that was racist. Okay, so here's some facts on the 1969 release. Yeah. It was promoted with a psychedelic-style advertising campaign because late 60s, early 70s. Right, And became very popular amongst teenagers and college students who appreciated it as a psychedelic experience. Whether they were on something or not, I don't know. Yes, they were. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I can say with a high degree of certainty, yes. <laughs> I mean, I could just see that being, you know, something that would happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. didn't do it. Kind of like, but... kind of like uh, the movie The Wall when that, you know, like all the, oh know, yeah, pot smoking folks were kind of right. like, that's really trippy, dude. But um, <laughs> animator Ollie Johnston recalled that young people quote thought we were on a trip when we made it. And every time we'd oh, go geez. to talk to a school or something, they'd ask us what we were on <laughs> when we made the film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, coffee? I, <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. Right. Oh, we were on the hard stuff. We were on the Colombian. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Very, yeah. very like I said, the release was also noted for the removal of four sequences in the pastoral symphony over stereotyping. They had, there were centaurs. Do you remember the centaurs, you know, frolicking? And uh, I kind of. Yeah. I see it in my head. Yeah. Very similar to like the, the Song of the South kind of stuff where you look at it now and you go, uh, you shake your head. Yeah, right. Right. But at the same time, the stories for what they are, you could make a version of that that is not offensive to, to people of any race, really. I mean, it's it's not it's not even about in this sequence. There were uh, a group of black centaurs that were like providing okay. things to the other centaurs. So they remove that. Oh. Wise, <laughs> yeah, darn. that was from the 40s, right? When it was originally made, and that, yeah, right, right, right. There were still problems back then. I remember seeing it in the theater, I remember loving it when I was little, mm-hmm. although not as much as Star Wars. But you know, they came out, <laughs> they came out on the same year for me, 1977. Huh. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I saw them over the summer, both of those. Those are both very kind of impressionable movies that leave kind of a mark on, on me from my childhood that I really enjoy. Right. They made a, a new one, which I didn't see because I just didn't want to spoil it. There's yeah. a Fantasia, I think it was like Fantasia 2000 or something. Sounds familiar, but yeah. I haven't seen it. I mean, if I could, I might see it and go, oh, this is ridiculous. This isn't at all like it really was. You know? Oh, well, here's an interesting thing, too. We're going to be going into video games pretty quickly, so I guess it's appropriate that I mention yeah. this as it relates to Fantasia. But Atari released a game called Sorcerer's Apprentice on the Atari 2600 based on Fantasia, where Mickey Mouse mm. is collecting falling stars and comets and preventing the brooms from flooding Yen Sid's wow. cavern. I would never name my firstborn son Yen Sid. But <laughs> so here's where I also remember a lot of the stuff that the Sorcerer's Apprentice sort of things. There was a game called Kingdom Hearts. Okay. And Kingdom Hearts was something that Disney and Square Enix partnered up. Square Enix is a company that makes a lot of JRPGs. They're a Japanese entertainment conglomerate they're responsible for final fantasy okay kingdom hearts is one of those games that disney and square enix came together and they have characters that look like they are final fantasy characters and there's a story involving mickey goofy and donald and they go to different movies essentially as as levels 
I remember playing the first one on the PlayStation 2, and it was really a lot of fun. Yeah. But since then, it's become something crazy where they have 15, 16 different games. They all take place in different time, like different sequences. It can get kind of confusing when you play Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. That's <laughs> that's the oh. name of the Kingdom Hearts game. <laughs> Okay. Kingdom okay. Hearts, 358 over two days. Okay. <laughs> like the fraction. Kingdom Hearts 3 recently came out. By recently, okay. I mean within the last couple of years. Uh-huh. I never bought it. I'm kind of interested in playing it, but the, a lot of the criticisms I've heard of it, the main criticism I hear is there's a boss fight at the end that's like nine sub-bosses. Oh, jeez. Okay. Which lasts a really long time. So are you familiar, okay. like if I say a boss fight, you kind of know what that means, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, There's some game I played where there was uh, a boss that showed up uh, at the end of so many yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. And, and as, we, as we went on, the boss would have his little underling bosses, a whole bunch of them. Yeah, sub-bosses. And you had, yeah, yeah right, you had to right. kind of fight those to kill the boss. Exactly, exactly. And what they came out with before Kingdom Hearts 3 was released, which did a lot of what they did for this one, I believe they took a lot of sequences from like your Pixar stuff. They did a lot of Pixar things in this in this latest okay. one. Okay. But I'm kind of interested in playing it, but it's one of those where it's like, okay, well I can let it go for a while and just when it strikes me I want to play a JRPG an action JRPG, yeah. um, I'll, I'll pick that up. Do libraries have games? <laughs> you know, my first thought when you said that was, hey, get it from the library. <laughs> but they don't do that, do they? No, they don't. <laughs> As we've covered ad nauseum, yeah. <laughs> digital. Digital is the latest wave. Yeah, I probably could go to the Blockbuster. You should have suggested that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same level over there. Did you go to the library? GameStop. GameStop may have it on disc, actually. Yeah. yeah. How much longer GameStop is going to be around, we'll never it's know. Exist, yeah. yeah. If it still is, who knows? It is. And the stock is still overvalued and probably will continue to stay overvalued. Some of the preliminary ideas I've heard before the pandemic sounded that like they could be cool, like they're going to convert to like a cafe, like a a gamer cafe oh, kind of thing. Yeah. And have more of an immersive sort of thing, but with digital sales, they got to change their business model somehow. Right. That's a little off subject. One last thing about Kingdom Hearts, crazy names like the one I was going to say that came out before 3 was released was called Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. There's such catchy names. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and something about Square Enix. They always put like a lot of things. Actually, Capcom does too. It's like Hyper Uppercut Beta 5. I don't know. When I see that stuff, I just ignore it. Yeah. If you like the franchise, I'm not sure that you would like it, even though Mickey, Goofy, and Donald are in it. Right. But it does have some interesting, fun, kind of puzzly things. I, You know what? I am Uh-oh. I am really interested in getting you in front of a JRPG at some point and seeing what you think. Yeah, sometime. Yeah, I don't think it's going to turn out well. <laughs> Probably not. I mean, you're going to be like, yawn. <laughs> okay, so video games, proper. You play games that have cartoons in them. Uh yeah. Right. All games have cartoons. In no. Them. I've never played a game that was human. I mean, Hitman, they're all actually based on human beings, and the level of detail is getting more and more realistic. That doesn't mean that they're real people. No, no, yeah. but, they're, but they're like fictional, I mean, you know, fictional characters. Right. It's animation, computer animation. Which is getting better and better. Yeah. More and more detailed. And from what I see of the PlayStation 5 footage on a lot of these games that I'm playing on my PlayStation 4, my gosh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Crazy like particle physics stuff. It's just the lighting is amazing. And I still don't see a reason to get one yet. 
what you're playing, you have a lot of cartoon characters. And to some extent, Broken Age is kind of a cartoon representation. Yeah, it is. A cartoon adventure. It is. Wait till you get to Day of the Tentacle. That is definitely cartoon. Good. If you have nothing else to say, I just said it all for you. <laughs> well, that's good because I didn't research this time. <laughs> well, you don't have to research what you're playing, though. Right. It's like, oh, you know, no. cartoon stuff. But you made the observation that isn't that every video game is yeah. cartoony. Yeah. But I think it's becoming less and less that way. And if you watch some of the games where it's based on more human characters and it's more like real life situations, even though it's fiction still. Right. I wouldn't call those cartoons. Well, maybe that's why they prefer animated movies, because the animations get better and better. Right. Like we, we've been saying. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of this is semantics. I mean, it's, you know, it's yeah. just one of these things where, do you know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I mean? Okay, well, then that's what, you know, it's, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. so we could call it whatever you want. A rose is a rose. By any other name, it's a cartoon. I wanted to talk about a game that is a fighting game. Are you familiar with the concept of fighting games? Well, it's where, where you're fighting something well, and something's fighting you back. No, if we're talking a fighting game, we're talking like Mortal Kombat. Like that game where okay. you, one person plays one character, another person plays another character. Oh, it's controlled okay. by AI. Okay. It's two-dimensional side-scrolling kind of thing. Oh, okay. Usually it's in an arena, which has got walls on the, you know, you've got um, a segment that it's contained. It's two-dimensional, right? Okay. So you can only walk back so far. Yeah. This 2D indie fighting game developed by a company called Main Six and published by Maximum Games, Them's Fightin' Herds. Them's Fightin' Herds. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And it is a game that is made of all sorts of hooved animals. Yeah, what do you call those? Undulates? Is it undulates? Is that what they are? Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah. All female, too. All female undulate characters oh. in this game. Oh. It makes sense that they're all female characters because the development of this game started as, in the beginning... There was My Little Pony. Oh, okie doke. And that was something that was a toy, and cartoons, I believe, came after that. Right. And then that went away briefly, but then they came back. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. This animator, who basically created the series and the characters, uh, her name was uh, Lauren Faust, and she came up with this and... Friendship is Magic is still pretty popular amongst little girls, I think. It's a kid's show, but for some reason, it also hit with boys aged 15 through 35. I didn't know there was a demographic like that. There is. <laughs> They're called bronies. Yes. I, I don't think there's anything sexual about it. I just think that they are just no. really big fans of... It. And maybe, you know, furries where you've got your various degrees of, of what, you know, is it sexual, is it not, right? Oh, yeah. I never thought of that. To me, it was just males that liked uh, the little ponies, the what whatever you call them. Oh, that's exactly what it is. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Forget all of that I said before it. But anyway. <laughs> so this... Group of 15 to 35 year olds, you know, they had their boards because yeah. they were fans of the, you know, like any other fictional series, like people who are fans of Twilight, they had their own chat boards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they could all gather and talk about what they loved. And for them, it was this uh, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic cartoon. On one of the boards, there was a discussion, a hypothetical discussion revolving around Marvel versus Capcom. Okay. Which was a, a fighting franchise. Okay. They were discussing which one of the characters would match up. Oh. Which pony character would match up with which character in Marvel versus Capcom. Yeah. And there were drawings that were done by this guy, Anukan, and had some discussions online about this. Yeah. Yeah. Then it just grew and grew. And so this group that 
eventually formed main six through this chat board decided uh-huh. that they were going to go ahead and they were going to make oh, a okay. fighting game based on the my little pony series friendship is magic wow so they got a software package called the fighter maker 2d it was a like an engine okay they didn't have any kind of prior experience with any software that was game based so they kind of started at that level and tried to create the different characters and what they ended up doing was they put it out to the community and have them beta test it for them. Yeah. As they were learning this more and more, they got more and more advanced with the game and it got more and more, you know, enjoyable. It was recognized yeah. by the Evolution Championship series, one of the it's basically a fight game championship. Okay. Back in the day it was mostly arcade games. That, you know, you had your fighting champions uh, yeah. fighting on, but then it kind of came into where you would have it on computer hardware. They were considered part of the indie fighting games for oh, the okay. series as far as they were one of the 17 nominees for player's choice slot in the competition. Yeah. Huh. They continued to work on it because people enjoyed the fighting. It was a little, it was different. The characters were more horizontal than, you know, up, upright and standing. Yeah. So it was a different way of fighting that you had to consider, and it was unique. Mm. So they continued to work on it. They didn't receive a cease and desist notice until February of 2013 from Hasbro. Hasbro had oh. been very tolerant of the brownies and all the different fan art and things thinking that it was just part of the promotion, right? It's, you know, like people who are fans, they're going to do, we're not going to crack down on any of this. But for some reason, they took exception to this fighting game. They were going to make money on it. That was the thing. Hasbro didn't want anybody to make money. Yeah. Off of their brand. Yeah. Here's the thing. They probably wouldn't have made as much money as they've made now. No, right. The other thing too is, I would rather play a wholly unique property based on new characters than, I mean, you know, there are some fans that'll play it, but I think it appeals yeah. to the same audience, right? You still have the various different undulate characters. Yes, yes, yes. Are they called Band of Bronies? No, they're not the Band like of Bronies. Band of Brothers. Yeah. Band of Brothers movie. Okay, never mind. That was one of the considerations for the company, but they called it Main Six instead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. That probably okay. wasn't. Band of Bronies. Once they received this cease and desist letter, they'd worked on this so hard. There were some people who left the group. They sought legal advice to see if they could come up with some uh-huh. agreement with Hasbro. They started toying with the idea of starting these new assets and new new characters, right? Right, right. The main six abided by the cease and desist. But yeah. fans on the board, oh. even though they took down all of the assets and everything, they had versions that had the code. So they actually completed, they, they actually came up with a completed game. On February 28th, 2014, a fandom news site, Equestria Daily. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Duh. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course it's the Equestria Daily. Announced the release of a finished version of the game using a combination of the team's unfinished build and fan-made stuff. Yeah. And so they called it the Fighting is Magic Tribute Edition. It was free. Wow. It was something that they offered to everyone. In spite of what they did, Main 6 can't be faulted for other people taking their work. Right. Right? Right. And doing whatever. Yeah, right. exactly. Even though they've abided by the cease and desist ever since. The main six came to the conclusion that there was no legal option for them to pursue. They couldn't reach an agreement with Hasbro. Yeah. Well, I mentioned the creator of Friendship is Magic. Yeah. Lauren Faust heard about this. According to Faust, she said she was happy to help. My little part to help Main 6 finish up this game the way it stays true to the spirit of the original, but in a way that can be freely shared. 
she helped develop the story, the settings, the animation, the characters. Oh. So that was very cool. Yeah. It was a different cartoon. So there's really nothing that yeah. Hasbro could do, I, I don't think. Mm -hmm. That is cool. Yeah. And one of the developers of the team is quoted saying, you can't copyright Lauren's distinctive style. And so it's like if you see the cartoon, the Friendship is Magic cartoon, right. you, you definitely see the similarities in the animation right, style. Right. I showed you a little bit of it. Yeah. It's really apparent how much love was put into this game and how much time they spent on developing this. They gained okay. contributions. Uh, or Main Six started a campaign for, I think it was Indiegogo. I don't know. I know you don't know. <laughs> Indigo Girls, I know. No, not the Indigo. But speaking, we're talking about RAM. I yeah. Know. Indiegogo is a crowdsourcing effort or a oh, crowdsourcing okay. thing where you can say, hey, we're going to make this game if we meet this deadline. There are a number of them now, but this okay. is at the beginning. Okay. Uh, when they started popping up all over the place. And and actually, like yeah. I said, the game that you were playing, Broken Age, was crowdfunded. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Long story short, Main Six surpassed yeah. their target, and they were allowed to use the Skullgirls engine. They developed the game. They raised $436,000 to complete the game. Wow. Full funding was successful. And so the stretch goals, what they usually do is they say, if we make this much money, we'll do this. If we make this much money, this, right? Right, right. Uh, one of their stretch goals was to put it out on the Mac and Linux alongside the, the Windows version. Ah, okay. Humble Bundle, for they got some connection there, too. And that was really cool. So it, the game was yeah. released in full. I mean, I remember reading about this before the pandemic and saying, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and yeah. showing people, yeah. you know, it was just in beta. People were helping them test it. Right, right. Well, it was finally fully released in 2020. And then the Mac OS version came out last October. So about a year ago, almost. A lot of work. A lot of work. A lot of people helping. A lot of people helping. And then also <laughs> yeah. they probably made a lot of money uh, because yeah. it was announced. Oh, geez. Wow. It was announced two weeks ago, August 18th. So three weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. It was announced that versions for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S would be made Available uh, on October 18th. So it's coming to the consoles too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. cool. So. Yeah. Yeah, that is. It's, a... it's nice to see people trying to help other people too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think just the whole thing with this Lauren, Lauren Faust, who basically right. was the designer of the series that, you yeah. know, that Hasbro made all their money off of. <laughs> Right? Yeah, right, right, right. Actually, lending a hand and helping the creation of these characters, and that was really cool. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. It's it's kind of like a um, what do you call it? Like an honor to the Hasbro. They should see it as. You yeah, know. they should. I mean, I think they should have seen that. I mean, if if they would have thought that it could make money, they would have settled, right? They would have settled yeah. on something that would make royalties, but they ended up mm. not. And now, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, they raised right. five hundred thousand dollars. That's not anything to sneeze at, as far as a franchise. Right. I don't think. Right, right, um, right. So, right. I mean, they lost their opportunity, and I don't know if Lauren, yeah. I don't know if Lauren Faust got any. You know, if like, she'll ever work there again. Well, <laughs> I don't know what she's doing lately. I haven't talked yeah. to Lauren recently, but anyway, oh, yeah. um, whether or not she works there, I don't think that's the thing. I mean, she, she's probably a freelance artist. Is that's my what guess. I thought. Independent. Yeah. yeah. And they better be giving her a cut. I mean, I don't know. Better be. I mean, it would be, <laughs> it would be nice of them to give her a cut of like royalties because she came up with the designs and stuff, but that yeah. doesn't always happen in business. Right. Right. You start right. seeing those dollar signs and then, you know, you start for, yeah. forgetting all the people that helped you get there. <laughs> we shouldn't make those suppositions, you know. I agree. No, no, <laughs> totally. But I like to think that they actually did. Mm -hmm. I'll continue to think that. Let's move on to our Cuphead discussion. Oh, yeah. Also another cartoon. 
featuring it was a video game first. Yeah. I call it a side scrolling shooter, but some people call it a run and gun game. Oh, anyway, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm generally pretty good at those games for some reason. I, I you know, like there's a there's a game Contra that was based on that was basically a run and gun sort of game where you had to aim this, you know. I mean, I can I can see that from yeah. what you showed. Yeah, and it's tricky. I mean, it's like it's it's pattern recognition stuff. I mean, I'll get it eventually if I play it enough. I'll be able to get through it. Yeah. But but you saw how difficult it is, and so many things coming at you. Exactly. But then also how much it looked like an actual cartoon animation. Yeah. Right. Like Steamboat Willie. It, the, I don't know why Steamboat Willie always pops into my head whenever I think classic animation. Simple. Yeah. Simple movement. Yeah. There's movement, but not real complicated. And then also there there are those little graphic Im- imperfections in in the film yeah. itself. Yeah. Chad and Jared Moldenauer created the game. Okay. Canadian indie game development company. They started studio MDHR. Are you sure that's not MDH1? Wait a minute. <laughs> It's I'm sorry, H- did I interrupt your no, thoughts? No, that's fine. <laughs> Again, with the funny acronyms. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know mm-hmm. if I'm never going to let you live that down or you're not going to let me live that down. Right, right, But right. one of the two. But it's no, okay. it's not MDHM1F, whatever. <laughs> um, the Mulder brothers, they enjoyed the aesthetics of those types of cartoons. and yes, obvious. And also the j- the jazz the music, the accompanying yes. music is also very impressive as far as the type of music you would find in those old cartoons. Yes. So all the game assets, everything as far as the animation, all hand drawn, deliberate okay. human imperfections wow. to make it seem more realistic like an old cartoon. Yeah. The soundtrack was written and recorded by a full jazz ensemble that did all, yes. uh, I think there are 51 different tracks on this game. Wow. They started developing the game in 2010 and they had their first preview event at E3 in 2014. The game was released as an exclusive for Microsoft Windows and Xbox One uh-huh. in 2017. I remember seeing it and going, oh, wow, that's so awesome. Too bad I don't have a an Xbox, right? Yeah, yeah. But then usually with something like that, you wait long enough, they'll come out with a version yeah. for the system that you want. So they eventually came out right. with a version for the PlayStation 4 and also for the Mac. They recently, as of June 30th, 2022, uh, they came out with a DLC expansion that you can play independently of the first original oh. set of levels called The Delicious Last Course. Oh, oh, okay. And that was released on June 30th, 2022. Also, of course, the Netflix animated series debuted February 2022. Okay. You said you recently saw the series, right? I've seen like five episodes, something like that. Uh, You know, when you called earlier today, I was watching it. Oh, I'm sorry. I like it. It's funny. Yeah. It's just so much like the old cartoons. It's just, and music, they have lots of music that you will love. Yeah. If you like the music from the game, you know, the effort they put into it. Yeah. I think you got to watch it. Is there in the game, is there an elder kettle? Yeah, there is the elder kettle. <laughs> that's the first, <laughs> that's the first scene that you see the, the elder kettle. So you, you're, you start at your house and then there's yes, a, yes, yes. there's a, uh, a shop owner who is a, who's a pig. Who you talk to? Yeah, pork link or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks like they they stayed true to the various different characters in the game too. Yeah, interesting, interesting. The full title of Cuphead is Cuphead. Don't deal with the devil. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a lot to do with the devil, definitely. Yes. Um, because apparently, according to the story, Cuphead made a made a deal with the devil. Yeah, the devil's always after him, it seems like. Yes. And now he's got to, I guess, claim the souls of all these different yeah, people. Right, right. So right. he's kind of working for the devil to pay off the devil, which doesn't seem like a good deal. Yeah, I don't know that. In the cartoon, he's just, uh, or animation, he's just trying to escape 
from the devil okay. who wants his soul. Oh, okay. He was supposed to take his soul, but he uh, was he just got out of it. Okay. And, and so the devil's after him now. Okay. In in the game, it's he lost a game in the devil's casino. Okay. So then he's got to repossess the souls of runaway debtors as payments for. Oh. That's the game with Cuphead and Mugman. Yeah, originally started as a game, and now it's a now it's a series that sounds like it's really uh, really quite good. Yeah, I think so. I really do. I think you'll like it too, just for the effect the 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 way they did it yeah um and it's only they're only 15 minutes so when you just you, you know if you're watching something and you need need a short break say before bedtime that's what mm-hmm. i do short I, there it is 15 minutes yeah but then you'll like it so much you'll have it run into the next okay episode. that's the next episode <laughs> yeah that's kind of the way it worked with the way of the house husband too during the project the molden hours actually remortgaged their house <laughs> to finance it oh my god yeah, fortunately, it worked out for him, though. Yeah, because right, right. it has sold many copies. Good. That's pretty awesome that they were able to take this idea. I'm wondering what's next for them, but right now they're still on the Cuphead train. I don't know if they're working on anything else or any other games, but right now, I guess you can ride the success of, of your one thing if you want to. I mean, a franchise like that could last for a while. I would think if they, you know, if they are going to do something else, this one seems to be so popular. Mm-hmm. It's like if you write a great novel, your first novel is a great novel. Mm-hmm. And then you can't write another one because it's going to be compared to the great one. You know, I wonder if they're thinking of doing some sort of a continuation, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, Mr. Teapot or something. <laughs> right. Or, or like a spinoff. Yeah, yeah. Or make it more complex or, heck, maybe even a movie, maybe even a feature-length movie. I mean, you know. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. If Netflix went for this, those movie companies are definitely going to go for, could go for yeah, this, too. Yeah. One other thing about this game that I want to mention which is not something that would interest you, but will interest our gamer listeners. Yeah. So when they developed this game, they were planning on surpassing the Guinness Book of World Records for the number of boss battles in a single run and gun game. So that's what they ended up doing. They made that mark. They were able to put... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's 31 different bosses uh, that they have in the game. So I uh-huh. don't know if they still hold it. You know, there are always other games right. coming out. Uh, before the world record was 25, an alien soldier, which I've never seen okay. before. But <laughs> but okay. Cuphead de- definitely surpassed that. 31 boss fights in total, with 17 being debtors, 7 being DLC bosses, uh, 5 being King's Leap bosses, and 2 being King Dice and the Devil. Yeah. So... King Dice is in the cartoons, too. Oh, yeah? How about Andrew Dice Clay? Is he in the cartoons? I haven't seen him yet. (laughs) I can't imagine. I hope not. There's a stage. Who knows? Yeah, maybe he's one of the debtors. So, let's close out cartoons. Okay, now let me... Can I just add a little thing? Oh, yeah, definitely. It doesn't have to do with cartoons, but it has to do with crowdfunding. Oh, yeah. When crowdfunding first started... Uh-huh. There was this teenager, I think he was, who just wondered what would happen uh, if he did this. And so he put out a crowdfunding thing that said he needed to make potato salad for a family reunion, but he couldn't afford to get the ingredients. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he asked for money. He got like $385 or something to make potato salad. That's a good racket, I guess. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. You re- I mean, who would send money to somebody who wants to make potato salad for, you know, a family reunion? Well, I guess enough people did. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a sucker born every minute, I guess. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing, too. What you don't understand about those platforms, you have to pay them fees. It's not like you just put that up there and you get the money. Oh. There's oh, a there's a platform I, fee yeah, on know. most yeah, on most of them you pay a percentage of what you get. If you go to um, GoFundMe, actually has a list of the yeah. platforms and what they're 
what oh, they okay. do. There are a whole bunch of other ones that are specific to certain industries. Right, I would think. Like the one that I was talking about with games uh, was called Fig, and it's just basically all games. But you also right. have things that Kickstarter was is is one as well. Yeah. Have you ever given any money for Kickstarter things or no? Kick, no, GoFundMe I did. Oh, okay. Okay. Some kid wanted to make potato salad, you know. <laughs> uh, I felt for him, you know. Yeah. I know how families can be. No, um, sometimes friends will put something up for some charity. Mm -hmm. And since they're friends, I trust them. Right. And we'll put a little something in. For the charity. Yeah. You know, this is a little bit off topic of cartoons, but a good way to close out the show, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. This is something that you might not get into because you're not a serious gamer, but other gamers should check this out. There is a company called Humble. They have the Humble Bundle. They're a publisher. What they do is partner with game companies. Okay. And, you know, like games that are older, right, that pretty much run their course. Yeah. Uh, as far as sales or whatever. Right. Well, they offer them on their website as a digital storefront. And what you do is you pay for, a, it's a donation. So they give you like a, a oh. really reasonable price, like a dollar per game. Yeah, yeah. Some of these bundles have 16 games in them or more. Yeah. I actually bought the full catalog of available games that are on my computer that are like, you know, you. I don't know if you, you noticed my Steam launcher, but it has... No. <laughs> Broken Age, it has Full Throttle, oh. it has Grim Fandango, and it has Day of the Tentacle okay. right there. I think I paid $15 for that and Psychonauts and oh. uh, Brutal Legend all on my Mac along with a whole bunch of other things. So it's what they do is they raise money and they only give you a limited amount of time. It's usually like two weeks for the donation yeah. and before the timer runs out. So I check it every oh. once in a while, but they all go to charities, like really great charities. Oh, so that's... it's yeah, it's a great thing. It's a great cause too. Well, actually, we can get into this later, but it's they work with AAA publishers. You can get a lot of really great deals on games. Think of it as like buying used games, except you buy right. the digital licenses for a whole pack of games, and you can give as much or as little as you want. They usually have a ceiling, like I said. Right. It varies, but usually it's about a dollar per game. That's the that's hmm. the minimum. If you get twelve games, twelve dollars. You can do more if you Correct. feel. Uh, yeah. Yep. They're starting to experiment with some with us. They're giving you some like better games if you're like a member of the club where you pay a monthly service kind of thing. But oh yeah. But as far yeah. as the original concept. I mean, I like the original concept better. And they also have a publishing wing that publishes a lot of independent sort of games as well. Oh, so yeah, it's yeah. very cool. So all you kids out there, you want to get bargain basement <laughs> games, Be humble. check out yeah. Humble Bundles website. Yeah. Wonderful. Donate all of your money in cartoons. I, do, I don't know. I don't oh, know how. Donate. Well. Donate. I thought you said don't eat. Yeah, but don't eat. Thinking, it. You're, talking, <laughs> you're talking to the wrong person. No, no. Don't. Don't I'm eat. Sorry. Donate. Uh, but anyway. From the Latin, dona. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> From donuts. Donate. <laughs> we'll do a show on donuts later. Okay. Thank you very much, Nora, for joining me on this week's episode. I appreciate you being here. And I thought it was great fun. It was funny, like cartoons. Exactly. Um, and I, I appreciate your uh, talking about cartoons. I learned some things. Yeah, yeah. And I actually heard a couple of cool stories that kind of, uh, if you think about it, gives you faith in humanity. Yes. Maybe a little bit. Yes. Yeah. There's still some good out there. <laughs> there is still some good out there. There are good people yeah. out there. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for joining us on this week's episode of the Too Vague Podcast. My name is Ben. And I'm Nora. And we've been your hosts. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Bye.